First, I begin with a lump of clay and tear off a piece to begin my pinch pot. Then I start to wedge the clay. Wedging the clay is kind of compressing the clay using your hands and the table or mat surface to get rid of air bubbles. Next, you'll see I inserted my thumb and I begin to pinch along the edges to create a bowl shape. This is a pinch pot. You wanna make sure the walls of your pinch pot are not too thin. Otherwise, when we put your, your clay in the kiln, it could dry out and crack. Now I go back to my leftover clay and I'm going to create two eyes that stick up from the top of my clay. I use my fork or this pointed tool to scratch and then I take some slip and put it where I scratched. Scratch and slip helps us attach a piece of clay to another piece of clay. So watch how I do this with the next eye I'm putting on. I get my piece of clay, I get the shape that I want it to be in before I add it on. I scratch both surfaces and then I add some slip. This is kind of like cement for clay. We scratch and slip. So with this next eye, I'll go back to my clay. I take a piece and then to attach it, I scratch and then I add slip. Then you wanna use your fingers to really mold those two pieces of clay together until they become one big piece. As our clay dries out, it is um, becomes a lot more fragile, so it might seem like something is connected well, but once it dries out and that moisture goes away, things might end up falling off if you did not do scratching and slipping or add enough slip. Next, I'm adding a tongue. Notice how I create the shapes for my clay with my hands before I attach them with scratch and slip. Then once I do scratch and slip, I can make minor adjustments to their shapes and I add details like the line in the middle of the tongue. Now we're going to cre keep creating our fish. I'm making sure too that I just remembered I have to put my initials on the bottom of my animal to make sure we know whose is whose. Now that I've done that, I am adding some fins to my fish. Notice how whenever I feel like my clay is getting dry, I go to my little water bucket, I dip my finger in, and it helps me smooth out the clay, add moisture, get rid of any cracks. As I'm attaching my fins, the fins are pretty fragile, so I'm making sure that I'm attaching them really well. I use my wooden tools, like my wooden knife, to help secure that attachment. So watch how I run my finger over the fin, and then I grab the wooden knife tool to help secure the fin to the body of my fish. It's a really great tool to use for a lot of different reasons. Next, I'm going to add the fish's tail. The tail was another piece that was kind of hard to get to stick. And as you know, my tail actually ended up falling off of my fish later. But if things fall off, we can always reattach them with glue once they've been in the kiln. One trick that I do here to help attach the tail is I take a little piece of clay and I roll it into a coil and add it to the base of my tail to help attach it more. So that's something that you could do too. Remember that all of these little details can be challenging, um, but just try your best. A lot of us have not worked with clay in a long time, or maybe some of us, this is our first time. I'm now adding the top fin to my fish. Remember always using scratch and slip and attaching it with the help of my wooden knife. When you are adding things like bigger things to the top of your clay creation like this fin, you have to make sure that it's pretty lightweight because if it's too heavy, it could crush the rest of your fish or it could just fall off. So making sure that things are not getting stacked too tall or too heavy um, because it's hard sometimes to get our clay to balance, you will see how that works once you get started on your creation. Um, here I am just going through with a slightly wet finger to smooth out any cracks or imperfections in my clay because I'm about to start adding some textures and details 
So I'm getting out some tools from my little tool case to add some texture to my fins. I'll show you what these look like when they're done. I'm kind of just creating lines in the fins to add texture and detail and make my fish look more realistic. I'm also thinking as I'm adding these details about how I would add color to my fish next time when we paint them. So I'm using this little pointy tool to make lines and dots to add some details and decorations on my fish. And this is one of the reasons why I picked a fish is because I thought, wow, I can add so many fun details and colors to my fish. If you are doing a dog, maybe you want to do some textures and details that would show fur. 